everybody, welcome back. Hope you guys are doing amazing today. Got you yet another draft story here for you, and this one is really crazy. Do you guys know about the double dealing head coach? Yeah, back in the 1971 NFL Draft, Washington and head coach George Allen were up to some pre-draft shenanigans and were caught trading the same pick to multiple teams. Just insane. You probably should not be doing that. But anyway, flashback to earlier in that year, Allen took over as the head coach and de facto GM. He made 19 trades alone, which I gotta say, a true less need of his day. <laughs> his motto being just a tad less explicit though, the future is now. Now, a few of these trades were mentioned in a previous draft video, which if you haven't checked out, click right up here when you're ready or hit that link in the description down below. It's a wild ride of a story too. But anyhow, here's some of his legitimate deals from that time. Verlon Biggs, a defensive end from the New York Jets for a 1973 first round pick. And Ron McDowell, a defensive end from the Buffalo Bills for third and fourth round picks. As well as the blockbuster trades with the Rams. But here's when things started to get dicey and he used the same exact picks to execute these bogus trades and acquire different players. He then traded that same 1973 first rounder to the Rams for defensive back Richie Pettibon. From there, he went on to use the same third and fourth rounders to go and get kick returning specialist Speedy Duncan from the Chargers. Which, side note, what a fantastic name for a kick returner, or any skill player for that matter. Speedy? Oh yeah, makes sense that you feel you've got to go get that guy no matter the cost, even if it's illegitimate. And to clarify, not endorsing that move, but I do understand it 100%. <laughs> and on that note, the player that were acquired in the illegitimate trades actually were huge contributors for a Washington team that ended a 25-year playoff drought in 1971. T. Bond started all but one game for them, intercepting five passes and recovering three fumbles. And he even returned to Washington later after his playing career to be a great defensive coordinator for them for the better part of a decade, as well as a head coach for a season after Joe Gibbs retired. Meanwhile, Speedy had over 1,000 return yards and made the Pro Bowl as a kick returner. So so what happened then? Well, George Allen and crew were caught red skinned. Well, on the hands anyway, red, red handed. <laughs> red handed. But even after being found out and it was known that they fleeced multiple teams in a way that was absolutely against the rules, the NFL only fined Allen and the team $5,000, which at the time was the maximum league penalty and in today's world would be $36,278.37. But still, I mean, come on. And what beats even that? Washington was able to keep the players from those trades. They did, however, have to pay restitutions, not to Shannon Sharp, but... So I want restitution! which ended up being featured draft picks to the teams that were duped by said trades. And that is just absolutely wild. Washington got away with one, but we all know Washington is the shadiest place in the world to do business anyway. <laughs> Although maybe they did curse themselves back in the 70s, selling their team to the football demons so they could be good through the early 90s, because as of the late 90s on, they certainly seem to be paying off their debts now. <laughs> the football gods did not take too kindly to that. But hey, maybe things are starting to look up now with, uh, you know, the sell of the team. But back then, they were willing to go all the way and not be shy. And I mean all the way to be great. And they were for a while. I mean, after all these acquisitions, the team received the nickname the Over the Hill Game, being that the average age of all the starters was 31 years old. Wow. George Allen may have been onto something, though, because that team did win the most it had in 29 seasons and even reached a Super Bowl the next season in 1972, which we all know who won that one because they won't let us forget. And spoiler alert, it wasn't them. <laughs> now, Lord only knows whether he was a sly dog willing to adhere to the if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, just win baby type of gameplay. Just win, baby. <laughs> Or he just simply forgot and truly wasn't keeping track of which picks were being sent where. Which, with 17 rounds back in the 70s, probably a difficult task. One that was more so the responsibility of the league than the team at the time anyhow. I will say though, it did happen once when he was the head coach of the Rams too. But as the story is told, the latter is the case and it was three honest mistakes. Whatever the case may be, whether he was one of the most notorious tricksters trying to pull a few over on the NFL to show them the flaws of their system, or just an accident, we may never know for sure. His winning percentage as a head coach is the third best in NFL history, only behind Vince Lombardi and John Madden. What the hell's going on out here? A pro football Hall of Famer and a legend nonetheless. You can feel about him how you will, but that's where the record stands. Love you guys, appreciate you guys. Keep it strange, everybody. I'll see you in the next one, and peace out. Just remember this, 40 men together can't lose, okay? okay.